Let's return to This Week in America. Here's your host, Rick Bratton. Welcome back, everybody. Coast to Coast, This Week in America. The highly praised crime thriller Lost in Vegas by Ian Jones is a gripping read, a real page turner with loads of twists and turns and a riveting plot line. We meet John Smith, an English guy, very single, ex-special forces, a man who solves problems, just don't try to stop him. He's in Las Vegas trying to track down a missing woman, which should be a simple job, but he soon discovers he's not welcome. There are some who want to make sure he leaves the city fast, one way or another. Ian has always enjoyed writing, originally working on black comedies, eventually decided to try something different, wrote his first thriller, The Handsome Man, a story about a hitman who travels to London from New York to do what he should be a very straightforward job, which spirals out of control. Ian then started writing a second novel, introducing us to John Smith, and a visit to Las Vegas for work provided all the inspiration that he needed. He's completed five books, Lost in Vegas and North of the Rock, are published. The next story, set in Los Angeles, soon to follow. His dream is to be able to be a full-time writer. He lives in southwest London with his family, a passion for motorbikes and music. From London, via Skype, Ian Jones, author of Lost in Vegas, our guest on This Week in America. Ian, welcome to the program. It's great to have you with us. Thank you, Rick. Nice to be here. Thank you. I am looking forward to this conversation and talking about this great character that you've created, this great storyline. I love the character, John Smith. I love what you're doing here. But let's go back to the, the start of this. I mentioned you were inspired on a trip to Las Vegas. What did Las Vegas do to really get you creatively in the mood to, to write this story? Uh, yeah, that's uh, it's quite strange. I, I was I'd started working on the story and I'd set it in London, and uh, then I had to go to Las Vegas for work. And I I I love Vegas. I like it over in Vegas. And, and really strangely, I was there and it was raining. It was really odd. It was raining, <laughs> and uh, I'd finished. I was had to do a meeting, and I was back in the hotel room. I was staying in the Luxor, and uh, the rain was running down the windows. And I was standing there just look, looking out the windows. Of, and it just hit me it's this story works here it works here and and that was it really and then then i i sat down there and then that uh, straight away and i started to rewrite it on my laptop and it was as soon as i did that the book just flowed it ju everything just worked and uh yeah it was a it was a good inspiration moment actually so, yes, it's amazing how just being in Vegas sort of turned it, that floodgate was was opened and all of a sudden these ideas come to you. It's always interesting when you end up writing a series. And I'm always curious whether the author thinks, OK, this is more than one book. I'm going to write a series or whether he starts writing that first book and realizes, you know, there's more here to this character. And I really don't want to let John Smith go. I'm going to continue a series. Did you know you were going to write a series when you started the first one? Uh I'll be honest, Rick. No, I, I didn't. I, I wrote the story, and um, then people started to, to read it, and everybody said to me, "You should write another one." And um, and, I, and then I kind of had, I thought to myself, "Yeah, okay." And I had an idea, and uh, I was working on a different book, and then I sat down and I started to write uh, another, a second John Smith book. One I've never published this one. This one is set in London, but then after that, I just found it was it just made sense to, to write them. So then I wrote North of the Rock next, which is set in uh, West Texas. And um, it, it's, uh, which is another place I've actually been to. So I can kind of uh, relate back to that. And um, yeah, so in, in, in truth, no, I, I never intended it to be a series, but, but now it does feel right to do it. I don't know how long for, but now it does feel right. The book is Lost in Vegas. Ian Jones is the author, our guest on the program, coming in uh, to us from London via Skype. The program is available at all the usual places. Amazon, of course. Go to our website, thisweekinamerica.us, and link on to get all the information on Ian. You can order the book there as well. You know, in reading the reviews, so many people have said you're very descriptive. You make the, the pages come alive. It's got a natural flow to it almost like a movie. Do you see this being, I mean, I can see this with the, you know, the, the thriller aspect. It's got a lot of action in it. I, I could see this as a, as a movie. Are your hopes that someday Thank this could be a TV series or a movie? Thank you. Yes. Um, yeah. I, I, I've started to believe that now because a lot of, a lot of reviews have said that you're right. Yeah. 
And um, in fact, I was talking to somebody just quite recently who was really interested in, in looking into it further. So, um, yeah, I, I, I suppose in, in terms of the kind of, in terms of the plot, I'm not doing anything particular. But yeah, I can I could see. Yes, it could. It could work as a film, I think. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. It would be exciting. It'd be very exciting. I mentioned in the beginning, your writing, how this developed, and you'd like to become a full-time writer, if that's possible, at some point. How often are you able to write now? I would think the, the more successful you become, the more you want to spend time in writing and develop characters for your book, in particular, the uh, the John Smith series. How often do you get to write? Yeah, that, that's true. It's when I'm happiest now is when I when I can sit down properly. At the moment, I'm just doing an hour here and there, which... Um, just fitting it in around work, really, and family, and and um, and I really enjoy it when I get the time. But I find that if I if I don't put time properly aside, I find it quite hard to concentrate. So if I just kind of like have half an hour, I find I can't really I can't really write like that. But if I've got a sort of a, a chunk of time, then then I can do that. And it would yeah, it'd be great. I'd love to be a full time author. That would be an amazing thing. How did you get from writing black comedies to uh, to thriller series? It, it seems like you were born to write thriller series. How did this transition occur? Well, um, that's a that's a very good question. I mean, I I, I was writing the kind of black comedy things because they sort of interest me. I've always liked that sort of style. But what I discovered was I could never actually finish the novels. I'd write maybe seventy five percent of it, but I'd then I'd read it back and I've written myself into a corner. So. Um, and it was kind of on and off for quite a long time. And then the thriller idea kind of came into my head and, um, I sat down to write that. And then as soon as I started doing that properly, then I found I could, I could write the whole book. And so that's the reason why I switched really. If I go back to black comedies, maybe at some, I might get the opportunity one day, but at the moment thrillers, yeah, I can, I seem to, to have a proper grip on thrillers. Ian Jones and is, I, yes, finish that please. Sorry. I was just going to say that, that I, I read all the time, Rick. I, I read a lot. I read a lot of books. And I find myself reading more and more and more thrillers over everything else now. I think you found a genre that uh, you're comfortable with. And boy, the readers are really responding. Ian Jones, our guest from London via Skype on This Week in America. Video version available on YouTube. If you go to our website, thisweekinamerica.us and click on videos, you'll see the video version of the interview book available at Amazon, the usual places, that information on our website as well. You mentioned sort of the frustration now by being a part-time writer. And when you get these great ideas, it's not always easy for you to follow through and to spend that time do you see yourself becoming a full-time writer would you what's what's holding you back right now just, just uh you know having to support my family and um i have to have a, a a job and and that's the thing it's um i just it's just hard to find the time um and weekends are quite busy with family um so it's it's just a time thing really um i, th I think there's a lot of i genuinely think there's quite a lot of books in me um, I think if I had the chance, I could, I could, I could be, yeah, quite prolific as a writer. But it's it's hard to 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 find the time. I'm sure you 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 know, Rick. Sometimes you just it, it's just hard to 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 just to do things that you really want to do. Sometimes it sounds like for you, it's not difficult to come up with story ideas. Just in talking and in your passion for what you're doing, I have a feeling you've got a number of those that uh, I'm going to say, considering you may even have already started some work on those. Is that sort of the fun part of the, the creative process is the beginning, creating that initial story to tell? Yeah, I, I do like that. I mean, I'm writing the next John Smith book at the moment. At the moment, I'm quite a long way into that. Yeah, and I'm, I'm, I, I, you're right. I do enjoy that. As you start to kind of, you, you have the idea and you start to formulate it, and when you sit down to write it, then it starts to take shape. And yeah, I like that. I like that. I do. Yeah. Um, you know, somebody asked me, um, you know, who my favourite kind of character is, and I, I, I like John Smith. I like the fact that he just is so anonymous. He looks like everybody else. He doesn't stand out. Um, but in Lost in Vegas, I quite. I like the power who's the real bad guy because he's just thrown everything away all the chances he had and I, and I like developing these characters I, I really enjoy that part of writing the stories developing characters and 
and trying to get a feel for them. It's, uh, it's, yeah, I really, I really do like that bit. When you develop someone like John Smith, is this based on anybody that you've known, you've read about, or is this totally John Smith is totally the creation of, of Ian Jones? Well, a, a good friend of mine would tell you that it's based on him. <laughs> 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 no, it's a, no, I, I kind of, I, uh, John Smith, I kind of had the idea because, um, there's a lot of stories like mine. I'm certainly not doing anything brand new here, but I, I just, I like the idea that, you know, nobody would look twice at him and he would always be underestimated. Um, you'd walk past him in the street, wouldn't even see him. You wouldn't even notice him. And if, if he confronts you, you no one's going to take that seriously. So that was really the driver behind it was the fact that this guy just looks totally average. He doesn't look like anything, but he has some skills and he can, he can do what he has to. And, and he's very good at it. And um, uh, yeah, that, that was kind of the, 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 the main sort of trigger for it really was to develop that character um, and to have that because, you know, a lot of other sort of people like this have got certain things about them that are quite stand out. And for me, I've got John Smith is just totally a normal guy. You know, he's nobody particularly. We're talking about Lost in Vegas, the book by Ian Jones, the, the saga of John Smith in the United States uh, uh, on a mission. Let's give it just a little bit of background here. How does he end up in Vegas? And he's he's dealing with, well, it's a surprise to him as this unfolds. He's dealing with some bad people along the way. Why is he here? What case is he on? Yeah, he doesn't expect all this. Um, he, he, he basically, he solves problems for people and he gets recommended to a guy back in England, very wealthy guy, very, very wealthy guy, um, who's um, was had a deal going on with a with a a, a, a hotelier in, in Las Vegas for quite a long time. Suddenly, the, this, this guy disappears and his son takes over and then everything starts to go wrong. So his daughter loved, you know, he's got a lot of money and his daughter's always been quite spoiled. His daughter loved going to Las Vegas. But he asked, he said to her, listen, don't go to Las Vegas while this is going on. But she went and then disappeared. So, um, you know, there's a lot of money missing, but he's not worried about the money. He just wants his daughter found. So, uh, and John gets recommended to him. And and that's really how the how the book sets itself out. So John goes over to Vegas, a, a city he's never been to before, um, to, find, um, to find Abby. And uh, he's he doesn't expect to run into all the problems that he does and the people that he's going to meet. He doesn't expect any of that at all. And um, it's listen, at, at the end of the day, it's another, it's one guy against a group of bad guys. I'm certainly not uh, writing anything completely brand new here. But um, people seem to uh, seem to enjoy the story. Well, they did. The reviews are excellent. And you take, as I mentioned in the beginning, on twist and turns. I'm interested in your process. When you sat down to, to work on Lost in Vegas, were you working off of a, a, a strict uh, sort of outline that you've got this all pretty well laid out? Or did this sort of evolve as, as John Smith got in uh, a situation he wasn't planning on getting into in the first place? Did it evolve or did you have this pretty well laid out? <clears throat> I, I had the outline. Uh, again, that's a that's a great question. I had the outline, but as I started to write the book, I started to realise that there were there were other situations and there were other positions that, that, that he could get into. As I started to write the book, uh, as, as you rightly said, the Vegas is ideal for somewhere like that. I mean, there's so much in Vegas; it never sleeps. And um, obviously, because I'm writing the story, I can create a fictitious hotel. I, you know, the, the hotel doesn't exist, but. Um, all the other hotels that are real and there's so much going on and it was I was able to kind of slot in um, the, the real Vegas around this kind of fictitious um, uh, world and, and as I did that other situations I was able to write in and other, other kind of environments I was able to establish as I was writing. It's a fascinating story that really unfolds when you when you read it, you'll share page turner or gripping all of that that I mentioned that all the reviews are stating it moves along so well. It's one of those books where, OK, it's two o'clock in the morning. I've got to get up. But just one more chapter. I really need to find out what's going to happen next. The book is Lost in Vegas. Ian Jones via Skype from England, our, our guest on the program. Now, this is the first in the series. Explain the books in the series and what's available now, because as I understand, Lost in Vegas is available and, and you have other books as well. 
Yeah. Uh, north of the Rock is, is the next story. That's set in West Texas, out close to El Paso, right down on the border. Um, and he's uh, John um, has a, a friend in, in the FBI that he's known a long time who gets asked to, what again, what should be something, just to basically go and just have a sniff around. There's some problems starting, see what he can turn up, because he really, this guy really doesn't, doesn't want the FBI to, to to kind of turn up at this particular place because it could be um, quite confrontational. So he goes down there and he gets caught up with some more bad people down there. And then the third story is in uh, LA, um, which is something where he's he's completed the work he's doing and he gets caught up in something which is nothing. He's not on a on an operation, nothing like that. He just happens to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. And uh, he gets caught up in something, and um, and then the, the finally the book that I'm writing at the moment is um, that he gets uh, set up um, to uh, he's, he's getting basically set up by the people he used to work for to uh, to take the fall for something that's happened many years ago. If you go to Amazon or Barnes & Noble, the usual places, look for Lost in Vegas, the book we're talking about by Ian Jones, and you click on uh, Ian's name, and it will give you all the books that he's written so you can get all the information, stay up to date. And we'll have that on our website as well. A few minutes left in the program. I hate to ask out of the books that you've written in this series if you have a favorite, but I'm going to anyway. Is there one <laughs> here that you particularly like? I, You know, I really, I'd read this book myself. I really like this story and I hate to see it end. Is there a favorite among these? Yeah, I th you know what? I think probably Lost in Vegas probably is my favorite. Um, whether it was because the first one I wrote, but I just, I think it was the fact of being in Las Vegas, all the way over in Las Vegas and, and, and writing the story and the way it just, it just flowed. I was sitting in a hotel room in Las Vegas and the, the book just flowed out. It was a great feeling. So I think, yeah, I think probably Lost in Vegas is, is uh, my favorite. If you ask my wife, my wife likes The Handsome Man the most, um, but that's never been properly published. That's, uh, but um, yeah, I think, Lost, I think Lost in Vegas, I would think so. You know, it's interesting. I, you, I, yeah, finish up that thought, please. No, no, I was just going to say, I should probably tell you the book I'm working on now, but... <laughs> well, yeah, my next one is, is, yeah, is, is my favorite, but I, I like that. And it's interesting, you, you've mentioned a couple of times that when you were in Vegas, you were almost in the zone where it just kept coming. It's like, okay, yeah. I think I'm going to call in sick a couple of these meetings because I got to sit here and I got to finish <laughs> this story. Do you find, and would you recommend to other authors... I would assume sometimes that happens where you're in the zone, you need to keep going, and other times when you can't come up with anything, the old writer's block deal. When you hit that where it's really not coming, do you force it or just sort of walk away till you find yourself back in that zone again? Yeah, you know, listen, that that's that's a, a great one. I mean, I I, I find if I, I away um, from where I normally write, sometimes when I'm really struggling, if I just sometimes I just might go and sit in the local coffee shop. And, and and then I find that I don't feel the same kind of almost pressure oh, yes. to write. Yes. I can sit down. I'm just out, out just in this, you know, and I, I find that sometimes that helps. That helps. But La Las Vegas, just being in Las Vegas was uh, that moment of inspiration. And then it just, yeah, the book. I wrote so much of the book while I was there. It was only there a short time, but I wrote so much of the book while I was there. You mentioned that you've been a reader. What was the inspiration for starting to write in the first place? Was it the fact that you were a, a reader and decided, boy, I've got stories to tell. I would love to do this also. Possibly. Yeah, possibly. I mean, I, I, I first started writing, but I wasn't really that serious about it. It was more something to do while I was kind of not working. And then over time, I, I started to get very, very interested in it, and I started to want to actually, actually write. And um, and now with, with looking at the, um, I, I just really enjoy it, and I just enjoy it. It's like an escape, and uh, I really enjoy it. What's the reaction, family and friends, where they actually can purchase a copy of your book, your name on the front of it, your story in the book? What's what's this like for you and for family and friends that, hey, Ian's a published author now. Look at this. <laughs> well, it's been a, a fair amount of Mickey taking. I'm sure you can understand that. Yes. Uh, people suddenly telling me, oh, can you sign my book? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, everybody's been very, very supportive. Um 
you know, um, you know, my wife, I, I read as I'm right. I write the book and the first person that hears it is my wife. Bless her. She has to listen to it and my kind of ideas. But, um, you know, it's it's been they've been very well received. And I'm and I'm and I'm I'm proud to have written them. I'm proud to have had them published. And I, you know, and I would I would this if, if I could. If this could be my job, that would be great. Maybe if uh, it, it gets made into a movie, that'll be it. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> yes, yes, and we hope that happens. You do such an excellent job with uh, with this series following John Smith. The book we're talking about is Lost in Vegas, Ian Jones. The book's available at Amazon, the usual places. You can Google it. You go to our website, thisweekinamerica.us, and uh, get all the information, link on to uh, the Amazon site that's got the information on Ian's book. Coming to us via Skype from London. Ian, it's been a pleasure meeting you, having you on the program. Hopefully, we'll stay in touch and continue your saga and that of John Smith and good luck in doing this so. doing this full time. You certainly have earned it with the work you've done so far. Congratulations on your success. Thank you for spending some time with us. Thank you very much, Rick. Thank you. I hope to talk to you again. Thank you. Ian Jones, our guest from London via Skype. The book is Lost in Vegas. We're back on today's program right after these messages. This Week in America is online. You can visit our website, thisweekinamerica.us. Scott Pinkerton, associate producer of This Week in America. Jay Anderson, segment producer. Ben Watson, webmaster. Otto Bache, director of engineering and TV production. This Week in America produced and is a trademark of Blue Funk Broadcasting, LLC. For information on all of our guests and to listen to this week's show, our website again at thisweekinamerica.us. And I'm Sean Bratton, executive producer of This Week in America.